Um, I rise to make a contribution on this bill, the Sex Work Decriminalisation Bill 2021. Um, and in doing so, I've had the benefit, of course, of listening to Mr Ondarchi's contribution, and I'll address some of those um, matters momentarily. But uh, primarily, this bill uh, will repeal the Sex Work Act 1994 to decriminalise consensual sex work between adults, abolish the sex work licensing system, and instead regulate sex work business businesses through mainstream regulators. And I'll go to, as I said in a minute, to um, deal with some of the, I guess, the tenets of uh, Mr Ondarchi's argument, which I think, having the benefit of heard these arguments this evening, um, really demonstrates to me and solidifies with me the fact that those opposite fundamentally actually don't understand what this bill is actually about. Um, and, uh, you know, it's... it's Again, the, it's the sky is falling. It's about this is the world's going to come to an end. Talking about the fact that you know it, there's no trust in government. Th this is actually about ensuring that sex workers and their their role and their functions is legitimised as a legitimate form of business. It's it's consenting adults. And I'll go to in a moment some of the um, I guess the fallacies that Mr. Ondarchi's talked about in his his um, contribution. And these things are, have been directly addressed. Um, in, in, in some of the uh, documentation that's, that's already public and on the record. But, but just by way of background, um, uh, Madam uh, Acting President, the, the Victorian Government recognises that sex work is a legitimate form of work that should be regulated through standard business laws to safeguard workers and reduce stigma. And um, it, it's important that, uh, that these workers are seen as workers and that their profession is legitimised and stigma is reduced. And it's sad to have to listen to the contribution of those opposite because, in fact, that's, that's what that entire contribution does, seeks to stigmatise and further demonise this profession. Um, and I, I might say that um, quite some years ago, uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, work for the New South Wales Working Women's Centre and it was a not-for-profit community legal centre. And uh, the clientele of uh, the community legal centre was that we represented uh, women from marginalised backgrounds. And they also included non-English speaking, women from non-English speaking background. But we, um, in those early days, and this is a long, long time ago, gave advice to sex workers. They were actually coming to, to us to seek advice on the implementation of uh, the GST. That's how long ago that was. Um, and uh, I have to say, having um, liaised and listened to uh, the work that sex workers do and the range of ways in which they conduct their business, um, it became apparent to me that, uh, as we know, that, you know, sex work is one of the oldest professions in the world. Uh, it's not going to go away and it's something that needs to be legitimised. And um, I think the main thing that seems to come through from those opposite is that there's still some kind of weird stigma that is associated and it's it's just not relevant in, in this day and age and all of the things that were talked about are just, are just not going to eventuate from those opposites. So, um, but look, I, as I said, in, in those early days as listening to sex workers and providing them actually advice, what became apparent was that they needed industrial advice about their working arrangements. They also needed tax advice, but they also needed health advice. They needed occupational health and safety advice as well. And those are all the things that are legitimate and come with working. Um, and, and, you know, so again, this is a very considered... Uh, this, this, the, this bill came from a very considered response that the government initiated, and we asked uh, Ms Patton to um, lead this, this very important work on behalf of the government. And so in November 2019, the Victorian government asked Ms Patton to lead the review to make recommendations for the decriminalisation of sex work in Victoria. And the review consulted sex workers, sex worker peer organisations, legal, health, education support service providers, commercial operators and industry organisations, workplace safety agencies, local and federal government agencies, law enforcement agencies and other community expert organisations. So after considering all of that, decided to decriminalise sex work in Victoria and the decriminalisation of sex work will remove offences and criminal penalties for consensual sex work. Now this is key because what we heard from those opposite is a lot of confusion and conflation of issues around alcohol, around um, perhaps potential crimes against people that involve non-consensual interactions. And again this is about consensual interactions, consenting adults. 
This work will include the decriminalisation of street-based sex work in most locations and repealing public health offences. And we know that many, many years ago, it was a Kane government that decriminalised prostitution, but, but street-based sex work was one of those things that was not captured by those earlier reforms. So perhaps these reforms are a long time coming, but what I do know is the, the way and the manner in which sex work is conducted today has varied greatly from the times of, of the early 70s and 80s. Um, you know, there's lots of different models of sex work that, that exist today. And perhaps, um, perhaps those opposite might even turn their minds to the fact that there's a range of people in our community who um, have legitimate needs and want to access sex work for, to, to have their needs met. It's not just about the seedy interactions that those opposite want to focus on and focus on continuing to, de continuing to stigmatise those who work in this um, who work in this profession. So, as I said, the decriminalisation will remove offences and criminal penalties for consensual sex work. It will repeal the Sex Work Act, Act 1994 and regulate the sex work industry through existing regulatory agencies, and I'll go to those in a moment. And it will also introduce supporting reforms in areas such as planning, public health and anti-discrimination. Now, uh, importantly, and I might just go to this um, point now, uh, you know, in, in Mr Ondarchi's tabled his reason amendment, which is about demanding that the government uh, release uh, its, its review in regard to um, the agency and sort of tries to conflate that we're hiding things and there's, you know, all manner of nefarious reasons why the government's doing this. But, but again, fails to understand the proper basis for this. And, um, in fact, the reason why uh, the review documents won't be released is because they are confidential and will not be published. And the terms of reference required Ms Patton to provide the Minister with confidential recommendations for decriminalising of sex work. Now, the reason for that was because uh, it is in an effort to mitigate the risk of further marginalising sex workers through a public review process. Now, sex workers who want to keep their anonymity are quite entitled to do so, are quite entitled to do so, and what you fail to understand is that by exposing sex workers, you're taking away their ability to actually... You are taking away... You are taking away their ability to have control over their own circumstances. But again, your reasoned amendment is flawed and fails to understand this point exactly. So again, it is about not releasing that because we want to protect workers. You don't understand it. You have no understanding of how to protect workers. You say you do, but you don't. And, and again, you come in here and conflate a whole bunch of things and you've got nothing to stand on. So again, this is about... Uh, ensuring that we don't further marginalise sex workers through a public review process. What you want to do is parade everybody in a public process. Shame on you. Shame on you. And you should make sure that you understand these issues better than you have today. And it just demonstrates that you haven't changed at all. None of you have changed at all. You're an embarrassment and a disgrace. And so, Madam Acting... Order. Yeah. Order. <laughs> be loud without that, can't I? Um, please. Uh, Ms Terpster, proceed. Thank you, Madam uh, Deputy President. So, as I said, the review consulted with a range of stakeholders to seek their views. This included legal, health and education support services, commercial operators and industry government experts, federal agencies, law enforcement agencies and other community and expert organisations. So this is critical. So let's get to the point of the, the sky's falling approach over here. So the regulation of the sex work industry will include, it will be regulated by existing responsible agencies. WorkSafe will be responsible for workplace health and safety. The Department of Health will be responsible for public health matters. Local government authorities will be responsible for planning matters. And contrary to the, co the contribution of Mr Ondaatje on liquor, the Victorian Commission for Gambling and Liquor Regulation will be responsible for liquor licensing. So again, to, to conflate this issue with services of alcohol and all sorts of stuff, I mean, honestly, there are agencies that exist now that have the capacity and capability to already regulate these matters. Victoria Police will be responsible for criminal investigations and any public safety matters. And I might add, again, on the, on the, the um, contribution of Mr Ondaatje talking about how this, this might be 
you know, some of these businesses might be able to be set up next to a school, preschool, childcare and places of worship. In line with the principles of decriminalisation with planning regulations governing other similar businesses, there will be no requirement for sex work premises or home-based sex work business to be separated from other land use, including school, preschool or childcare place of worship. These reforms acknowledge and address the current restrictions are harmful to sex workers, are not useful or necessary to maintain public amenity and largely exist because of the stigma against sex work. By removing separation distances, we are ensuring that sex work service premises can be established in safer commercial and mixed-use areas surrounded by similar commercial services and retail businesses. So again, you know, the, the contribution that was made off it lacked on evidence, lacked on any, again, it's all just skies falling stuff. There's no real uh, force or evidence to any of the allegations made over there. And this is about, again, these reforms go towards protecting sex workers to ensure they can conduct their business, legitimate business uh, operations and activities in a more safe manner. So again, it is again we've heard about you know claims about violence uh, towards women, and this government over here takes these matters very very seriously. You know the, the, the Andrews Labor government uh, committed to implement all the reforms of family violence, and we take violence against women and children very seriously. But there are a range of factors driving violence against sex workers, including stigma and, dis and discrimination, and the contribution by those opposite actually underscore that. It, it's just it, oh, highly inappropriate. However, the actual act of sexual activity for Payment or reward is not inherently violent. Conflating these issues frames sex workers as responsible for crimes committed against them. Sex work is by definition voluntary and consensual. If violence occurs towards a sex worker, it is a crime in the way that would be a crime against any other person. Sex with an underage person is a crime regardless of whether the underage person is provided with payment or reward. That is not sex work and is a crime. Destigmatising the sex work industry and reducing discrimination is essential for protecting people working in the industry and shifting public perceptions of sex work. Entrenched negative perceptions of the sex work industry impacts sex workers' mental health, reinforces attitudes that drive violence against sex workers, creates barriers to accessing health care, which I'll turn to in a moment, social services and housing, and limits educational employment opportunities for workers, including those who wish to leave the industry. And I might add, um, Madam uh, Acting President, a, a, a quite a few years ago now I volunteered with an organisation called Open Family and one of the, the roles that we did was we went out at night and we went down to St Kilda and we, um, we had a bus. It was also a needle exchange program but we provided opportunities to those sex workers who got on the bus. If they wanted referrals to other services that was what that service did. Did they want to get off drugs and alcohol if that was a problem for them? We also gave them a whole range of services and supports if they wanted to take that for them. So I, I understand that you know those opposite want to focus on some sort of seedy underbelly, but, the, but those workers um, are, are so much more than just a small um, proportion that they want to talk about those opposite. It's much more broad and much more diverse than that. So let me just quickly turn to the health issues here. And th this is, again, one of the reasons the stigmatisation, what it does is drives, it, it makes people feel unsafe, that they're not going to come forward and actually perhaps seek um, help or assistance in regard to their health issues. And one of the things that I noted uh, in, in preparing to speak tonight, um, Madam uh, Acting President, is that there is no evidence that suggests that sex workers carry more STDs than any of the other. In fact, sex workers... Um, uh, it, the evidence that was received as part of this inquiry is that they actually take uh, their health and safety very seriously and um, uh, they take um, appropriate protections uh, towards uh, not only protecting themselves but also their clients from uh, any uh, impacts of, of uh, transmission of sexually transmitted diseases. So again, the stigma surrounding sex work and sexually tr transmitted diseases is a perception that is not supported in evidence. Evidence indicates that sex works have comparatively higher rates of compliance with safer sex practices and low rates of sexually transmitted infections than the general population. So, but those opposite don't want to hear about that. They just want to keep the stigmatisation going. In addition, existing cr criminal laws make it an offence to recklessly cause or engage in conduct that may cause serious injury, including infecting someone with a sexually transmitted disease already, um, that already apply in the sex work industry. To address this stigma, um, 
and treat sex work industry as an equivalent manner to other industries. The Victorian Government, as I have touched on earlier, will be repealing pu public health offences from the Sex Work Act. This means sex workers will no longer be required to undergo mandatory sexual health testing, nor will there be criminal repercussions for failing to practise safer sex. So I'm the clock's running down, um, Madam Acting President. I could go on and on. I hope I've dispelled some of the myths, myths today that have been put by those opposite. I know there'll be other speakers on this, and I look forward to uh, hearing the other contributions. Uh, but, uh, Madam uh, Acting President, I commend this bill to the House without amendment, and I encourage everyone in this chamber to vote for this bill without amendment. Thank you.